Hello, in this video we will look at a couple of ways to convert non-conventional materials to conventional materials in Aspen. So we'll have three examples in this lab starting with a pyrolysis model, then we'll have a gasification model, and then the last one would be a simple anaerobic digestion model. Okay, so for this lab we'll have two starter Aspen files. For the first part, we'll use the file lab5starter.apw, which you can get from Blackboard. So this file will have the components already put in and the specification of the biomass stream. Okay, so going on to Aspen. Right, so this starter file lab 5 starter.apw will have your usual components, biomass, nitrogen, oxygen, water, but I've also put in the components of our model bio oil or pyro pyrolysis bio oil, which is transcratonic acid, hydroquinone, acetyl, vanillin, and so on. I've also added some data from literature because when I first ran the model there was an error that says I have missing data and this is not unusual for modeling quite complex components like probably isoeugenol or some of these large molecules here so if you want to include those in your model but it doesn't have all the data like enthalpy of formation or critical temperature and critical pressure that Aspen uses to estimate other properties you might have to look at literature to um, get those data and the literature is usually chemists doing a bunch of measurements for enthalpy or for critical temperature and pressure. Um, if they're quite dated, I think that's all right. Right, so going on to simulation. Right, so this is the biomass stream you can see I've inputted the starting temperature and pressure, the starting flow rate, which is 10 tons an hour, and the component attributes. So this is approximate analysis, ultimate analysis, and sulfur analysis. I've also entered uh, particle size distrib distribution here. So that's all done. Right, so in this starter flow sheet, we have a dryer at the start. So you're all familiar with this already. Dryer with a calculator and then a flash separator to separate wet air from dry solid. And then a dry solid goes into a crusher where it's being milled. And then the milled biomass goes into a screen that separates the particles over the specified size, right? So those particles just go recycle back to the crusher feed there. And the feed um, of the right size just goes through, okay? All right, so the screen actually makes the crushing equipment more efficient. So that's a good thing to have on your model too. Our feed will have our desired dryness, which in this case is 7%. OK, 
can already be connected to our pyrolysis reactor. Okay. So for our pyrolysis reactor, we'll use an R yield reactor over here. Right. Just put that in, and as usual, just connect the streams and make a product stream right there. And to specify the R yield, we'll just go right click input and we'll specify a temperature of 500 degrees and a pressure of 5 bar. Okay. So the main thing for our yield is actually the yield part. It's where we uh, input component yields. So choose a component there. Say transcrotonic acid. And then input the mass fraction, which is 0 0.030468. And so on with the next one, one four benzene diol, which in Aspen here is P hydroquinone. So this one is point zero three eight one two six. Yep, so that's usually how it goes. So just add all the components here. What you can also do is that if you have a table like that, you can copy the components, but the co if you copy the components it should be written similar to what Aspen uses. So, for example, transcrotonic acid here is written like that. But in Aspen, it's trans01. So it should be this. So you can copy it. Although you can also select the mass fraction column. Copy that. And then paste it on Aspen. And if you have that, you just have to select the components. So this one is water. Okay. This one's transcrotonic acid. Hydroquinone. Acetal. Vanillin. isoeugenol and so on. Okay, and then just be sure to select the right basis for our data, it's mass basis rather than mole. Okay. Alright, since I have all these components in order on properties, I can just go there. And go from my components go from water to silicon, so let's go H2O to silicon, select that, copy, and paste. All right. Just, just check with your tables if everything's lined up.
So for example, 246 trimethylpyridine, 246 has a mass fraction of 0 0.000383. Yep, that's correct. So we just have to change all the moles to mass. So when you're getting the data, just be sure that what you're getting is, so if you're getting a mass fraction, make sure that it's really mass fraction. And if you're getting a mole fraction, make sure that the source you're getting it says mole fraction or mass fraction. So you'll be sure. When that's all in, you can try to run it. And let's see the results. Okay, outlet temperature 500, outlet pressure 5, heat duty, sin gigacalories per hour, but we can change it to megawatts. So 11.324 megawatts. We also say that. Um, there's a warning for this block. So it's usually specified yields have been normalized to maintain an overall material balance. Sometimes when you get a yield profile or the values for your for your yield, it doesn't automatically balance with the input. That's because sometimes when you look at literature, they have this analysis, proximate and ultimate analysis. And then on the other hand, on the product side, they have this analysis of the yield. It doesn't really balance because some researchers don't really take the time to do the calculations of balancing the biomass and the product. And that's not really a big fault for them. Okay. And then also following elements are not in atom balance. Hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, sulfur, chlorine. This is also not unusual for our yield and pyrolysis because the different components will have um, some differences compared to the ultimate analysis. So um, that's not too troubling for uh, our yield model. And that's why Aspen just returns it as a warning rather than an error or a, se or a severe error. Now let's look at the streams for this block. Okay, so remember we have a feed stream and the product stream. So our feed stream is all solid. And this mass flow. And our feed stream is all biomass, nothing else. Well, I product stream has zero biomass. So that's complete conversion from a non-conventional material biomass to more conventional or actually fully conventional products in our product stream. So there's water, transcritonic acid, hydroquinone here, acetyl vanillin, isoeugenol, and also all the rest of the components.
Yep, so that's how you model an R yield. And the second part of the exercise tells you to model the separation of char. So that's silicon and carbon. So separation of char. Let's try to use a flash separator. I'm just there. Right, so remember that at 500 degrees Celsius, all our products might be gaseous, liquid, and solid. But the liquid products might be gaseous at this temperature and pressure. So if we look at the stream again, right, so our vapor is 0.574, liquid is 0.425, and solid fraction is zero. We have our separator there. Reconnect destination. Let's make two product streams there and there. We reckon our solids would go down here and our gas and liquid will go up here. say 500 4 bar okay and now let's see the streams So we see that the lighter components here usually goes up into the lighter stream, which is S2. And then this component, Cellobios, it's a relatively heavy one, goes down. Okay, gases, CO, CO2 go up. The heavier one, C20 and C21, they are split between the two streams. But we see now carbon, see here C and SI, silicon. They mostly go to S3, which is the heavier fraction. Right. Just trace amounts in the gas fraction. So that's the separation. So we have most of our gases and liquids up here, and all of our solids and some of the liquids and gases go here. Okay, and that's understandable because the temperature we're using is 500. Okay. So you can actually get better separation if you cool it down or if you use a, a lower pressure, like two bar or one bar. But also, you need to decide if you want to cool it before you separate, or you just want to separate it and then cool it afterwards. That depends on the design of your plant down downstream from the pyrolysis equipment. Right? So that's pyrolysis. Thank you.